I had a coworker contact me asking if I could look at their chainsaw, and of course I said yes. Fortunately, it looks to have been taken care of and is in very good condition. The reason I say that is because all too often I'll get something to work on and it appears to have been thrown around and carelessly handled. As far as I can tell, if they're treating them poorly, how well do you think they're maintaining them? The answer is typically not good. In today's video, we look at this chainsaw and the problem is that it has a fuel leak and it won't start. Now that might not sound like a terrible issue, but if the saw were to catch fire while being used, it could potentially cause a forest fire, which would obviously be a serious issue. Now I'm going to try and repair this chainsaw, however it may not be the exact repair you need to make to yours. We'll explore other options later in the video. Now we're only going to mention what these other options could be. We don't have enough time to look into them, but if you need more information on these options, you're welcome to ask as many questions as you need to. The first thing I need to do is look over the saw and see if there's anything terribly wrong with it. And the first item that I see is that the chain is a bit loose, which isn't a terrible thing, but it's not only loose, it's also on backwards. Now you can still cut with a chain like this, but it's not going to do a very good job. It's not related to a leak, but it's good to know and we'll keep this in mind while working on the saw. Overall, this chainsaw is in really good condition, so I don't think it was used all that much. Next, I'm going to check on the fuel tank and the oil tank. I want to see if there's anything in them, and also see if the fuel filter is still connected to the fuel line, because if it isn't, we'll have to remove the carb and inspect it. As to be expected, with a fuel leak, the tank is empty, but luckily the filter is still connected to the line inside the tank. However, the line looks to be a bit rough, so we might have to consider replacing it, which on this particular saw is fairly simple. Now, the oil tank is completely full, which can only mean they filled it recently in hopes of using it, only to realize it had a fuel leak. One thing I need to do before I do a test start is to check on the health of the engine, and I'll do that by slowly pulling on the rope to feel how much the engine is fighting back, and I'm glad to say it's fighting back very well. That means it's not worn out, and we shouldn't have any issues with it. Now, if it was really easy to pull the rope, it could mean the engine is either worn out, or we have a piston ring that's stuck. The next thing we need to do is remove the top cover and the air filter. That way we can put some fuel into the carb's throat so we can do a test start. Now if it runs for a few seconds, it means the ignition system is working just fine, and then we'll move on to the fuel system. Now if it doesn't start, we need to test to see if we have spark from the ignition system. Luckily it started and ran for a very short time, which confirms two things, that we have spark and enough compression from the engine. Now if yours does not start, remove the spark plug from the engine, reconnect the spark plug wire to it, and touch the plug to the engine while pulling the rope, and watch for spark at the tip of the plug. If you don't see any sparks, it could mean your ignition coil is bad and might need replacing. After removing the air filter base, the cause for the fuel leak is very obvious. The fuel line has come off the port on the carb. Now, I could just reconnect the line to the port, but there's no guarantee that it's not just going to come off again. Now, these lines do not last very long, especially if you use the wrong fuel. And since it's here, I might as well replace it. The worst part is that I need to remove the carb to run the line because the opening for the tank is located under the carb. And since it's going to be off the engine, I might as well inspect the carb too. The first part I like to inspect is the pumping section of the carb, and the reason is because I want to inspect the inlet screen for debris. So here's the weird part. The inlet screen is the round part, and it doesn't look like it's that bad, but after touching it, the screen has a thin film of white material covering it. It's weird because the fuel filter should have kept this from happening, so it's a good thing we did inspect the carb because this was going to cause a fuel starvation issue when the engine is running. Now to safely clean the screen, I'm going to remove the metering diaphragm and the needle and rocker arm assembly. This brings us yet to another issue. The metering diaphragm is supposed to move back and forth to control fuel flow through the carb. If the metering diaphragm is beginning to harden or form wrinkles, this could potentially cause the engine to run poorly. Now this one is still flexible and we could still possibly use it, but it's starting to form a wrinkle. The other issue is that the diaphragm is also crooked, which could cause it to interfere with how it works. So instead of waiting, I'm going to replace it now. When replacing the diaphragm, always make sure it looks the same as the one you're replacing, and the most important part is the stem that's in the middle. The stem can either be long or short, and this one happens to be the longer one. Don't throw away the diaphragm just yet, because we still need to remove the gasket from the old one so we can reuse it. For the next part, we need to be extremely cautious, because we're going to remove the bolt that holds the rocker arm assembly to the carb. After that, we can then carefully remove the needle, rocker arm, and the spring. 
Once you've gotten these tiny parts out of the carb, you'll need to carefully put them somewhere where you won't lose them. After that, we can then safely use either brake cleaner or carb cleaner on the screen. Now, while spraying the screen, I'm also going to watch to see if the cleaner is going to pass through the screen. If yours isn't able to pass through it, you'll need to keep spraying it until it does. If it still won't pass through it, then you'll need to fill the pocket with cleaner and let it soak repeatedly until it does pass through it. The last part I need to check are the two check valve flaps. I need to make sure they're parallel with the rest of the diaphragm, and the easiest way to do that is to look at it from the side. Now this one is good, so I'm going to reuse it. However, if your flaps are bent and out of shape, I would consider replacing the carb. Since I know my carb is good, I'm going to start putting it back together. You'll need to be extremely careful when putting the needle and rocker arm assembly back into the carb. They are very easy to lose, and if you do lose a part, the only advice I have is to just replace the carb. Now once back together, check and make sure the rocker arm is moving like it should, and if it's not, you'll have to try it again. Also, when installing the new metering diaphragm, make sure you put the gasket down first. Now if you want to take the easy route, then buy a new aftermarket carb instead of working on this old one. They are not that expensive and will save you from having to do all this tedious work. Now once the carb is back together, it's not time to remove the old fuel line and install a new one. Now if you did buy a carb kit, it may have come with some fuel line along with a new air filter, a fuel filter, and a spark plug. Now I don't care for the spark plugs that come in these kits, but I do know a good use for them. Too bad it's never going to be inside an engine though. Since there is no purge bulb on this chainsaw, there's only one fuel line, which makes it extremely simple. The fuel line size I'm going to use is 3 sixteenths of an inch, and cutting the end at an angle will help you get it into the opening in the tank. Now, after pulling the line out of the opening, I'll then install the old fuel filter because it's still in great shape. If you suspect your filter to be an issue, I would consider replacing it. After you put the filter back into the tank, make sure there's enough fuel line for the filter to rest against the back of the tank. This will help to ensure the engine has plenty of fuel when turning the chainsaw on its side. I'll then cut the line so it's near the port on the carb. After that, we can then install the carb back onto the engine. So recently, I had a viewer ask my opinion on what kind of chainsaw they should get. It was very difficult to answer this question because I had no idea on what their property looked like or what kind of saws they already had. But to answer the question, I would tell anybody to get a small chainsaw. Unless you have many trees on a large property or you're a lumberjack, I really don't see why a homeowner would need anything bigger than 18 inches. But it's your money. Spend it on whatever you want. If you want a V8 powered chainsaw from Benford, then be my guest. Once we get the saw back together, remember that we do not have a purge bulb. That means the first couple of pulls on the rope will only serve to pull fuel from the tank to get to the carb. The pulls after that will then try and start the engine. We might also have to adjust the carb to get it to run correctly, and for this one, you'll need the splined carb tool. If you need one of these, there's a link in the description. Now the L screw is closer to the engine and it's for adjusting fuel at idle speeds and when squeezing the trigger. Now the H screw is closer to the air filter and it's for adjusting fuel while the trigger is squeezed and while the engine is at full speed. You might also have to adjust the idle speed which is at the opening at the top. Of course I can't start the saw just yet because I need to turn the chain around otherwise it's not going to cut very well. I'm also having some difficulties with the chain break because it doesn't seem to be responding. I'm going to have to take the cover off anyway, so I'll take a look to see what's going on with it. Now, after taking a closer look at it, it seems the cover was not completely in place when I activated the brake, so the band missed the clutch drum. Now, after getting the side cover off, I realized it was covered in sawdust and bar oil, so I'm going to give it a good cleaning after flipping the chain around, of course. I don't blame them for having the chain on backwards, but this would be a great time to remind the owner to read the owner's manual on their saw. If you bought yours used and it didn't come with one, then do a search online and you should find a copy fairly easily. So the cover is clean and I opened the brake as well. I also noticed that the pin for the adjuster was off and I think this is the reason why the cover wasn't completely on. I'm going to turn the adjuster so the pin will line up with the opening in the bar and then reinstall it. Once the pin is roughly in the correct location, I'll then install the cover and the nuts. Now don't tighten them just yet, only make them finger tight. After that, we can then lift up on the bar and then tension the chain by turning the adjuster. Then we can tighten the bar nuts. I would also refer to your owner's manual to properly tension your chain. Once the chain is back on, I'm going to check and make sure the chain brake is working like it's supposed to. After that, I'll then put some fresh fuel into the tank and then make my way back to the wooded area so I can test out the saw. Remember, without a purge bulb and the carb being empty, it's going to take several pulls before the engine will even think about starting.
so unfortunately it didn't stay running now before i try and adjust the carb i'm going to slightly increase the idle speed and see if that will keep the engine running So it didn't stay running any longer than before, which means I'm going to try and adjust the carb. For an engine that starts and runs but stops soon after, I'm going to increase the fuel at idle. That means I'm going to turn the L screw counterclockwise and I'm going to start with a quarter turn. So this time it ran much better and longer, but I think it still needs more fuel. I'm going to start it again and give it another quarter turn and see what happens. After adding more fuel to the engine by turning the L screw counterclockwise a total of half a turn, this chainsaw is now running much better. I would have made adjustments to the H screw if the saw was having a hard time and bogging down during the cut, but that never happened so I didn't feel it necessary. Another option as to why this chainsaw was leaking fuel would have been a bad carb. If that was the case, I would have tried to adjust the rocker arm and inspect the metering diaphragm, but to be honest, replacing the carb is a much better idea because it takes all the guesswork out of it. So in the end, this saw didn't need much to get it running again, but we went ahead and replaced the items that would have eventually failed and tuned the carb so the engine stays running like it should. So my question is, did I go too far in getting this chainsaw running again, or should I have just reconnected the loose fuel line and tried to adjust the carb with the blocked inlet screen? I don't know how it would have ran, but I'm sure I would have had a hard time tuning the carb if I had gone the easier route instead of choosing this one. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or your own projects, and I hope to see you in the next video.